Hello everyone. So today I want to talk about the system and how even though we may not be able to change the system, it's very good to understand what it is and how to stay out of the system. So I was watching a good podcast this morning with Dr. Axe and Dr. Casey Means and she was a medical doctor who trained to be a surgeon and then became a holistic functional medicine doctor because she realized that the system was about keeping people sick and not actually helping them with their health. So I'm going to share some clips about this because it's, it was just excellent. And I have the utmost respect for these types of medical doctors where they actually realize the system that they're in and they have the courage and the bravery and the morals to get out of that system and start their own path and really help people. Those are the absolute best medical doctors out there. And I wish more of them would step up. And I think more and more are uh, trying to do that. She also does explain as to why more doctors aren't doing this and why they're staying in the system. Um, one, because, you know, they go to school for so long and, and they spend so much money. I, I really don't know why they have to go to school this long. It, it's kind of strange and spend so much money and, and they make it such a difficult journey. And they take the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. And I think they go to medical school and they are really hoping that they are going to help people and not even realizing what a corrupt system they are in and who this system is run by. And so some of them, you know, they have a lot of debt from their schooling. Uh, they want to believe what they're taught. I mean, to have like 10 years of training and then to realize most of it was inaccurate or it's really not about helping people. That's, that's a hard pill to swallow. So it can take some of them a while to come around or some never do at all because they do make pretty good money as medical doctors. And it can be scary stepping out on your own and going against the norm. So I want to share the first clip with uh, Dr. Axe introducing the podcast and, and the doctor and then uh, what they say. So let's take a look. I can get this to go off. I have Dr. Casey Means. She's a Stanford trained physician, the chief medical officer and co-founder of the metabolic health company Levels, which I have used their continuous blood glucose monitor and absolutely love it and recommend it to many patients and clients over the years. And um, we're gonna dive into a lot of things today. We're gonna cover why healthcare spending is increasing. And well, I'm gonna ask you the question, why are we getting sicker today? When you look at the numbers of people getting metabolic conditions, it continues to increase, even though we're spending more and more money. Also, we'll get into different emotions like fear and how that affects metabolic health. We're gonna get into all the blood work, blood testing, and talk about something called good energy, which is mitochondrial health. There's something called a mitochondria, which is like the engine for your cells. If you keep that healthy, you're going to have good energy. If not, you won't. So we'll get into all that and more. Dr. Casey, welcome to the show. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I know, um, you know, I've read this about you and I know that I, I hear this often as that oftentimes people like yourself, you get a traditional medical, uh, tr traditional medical training and you don't end up doing conventional medicine and all of the tr thing, uh, the things that you were trained in school. And so for yourself, you've taken a very different career path. Rather than prescribing medications, you've really focused on using natural ways to help people heal. Well, what caused you to sort of switch gears and go from one career path in more conventional to one that's much more natural? Yeah, so for me, Josh, it was it was really that I was nine years into my training, you know, four years of medical school, close to being done with five years of surgical training. And I was trained, I trained as a head and neck surgeon. And I kind of was looking around me and looking at the realities of what's going on in the Western healthcare system. And the reality is, is the patients in America, they're getting sicker every year. Like we're not, we're not getting better as a country in terms of health, even though we're spending monumental resources on health. And then kind of going deeper than that, realizing, you know, every single institution in America that touches our health, from hospitals to clinics to pharmaceutical companies, medical schools, even insurance companies, they all make more money when we are sick. 
And that's a huge problem. And I was a doctor working in a system in yeah. which the business model for the business, you know, people sometimes think healthcare is like a philanthropic organization or a nonprofit. It's not. It's a business. And that, busi- that business is designed to grow. And as a doctor, you're a worker in that system. And the, cent- the, the incentives are totally misaligned right now. And so even though I and my colleagues all go into this profession with the noblest of intentions to help people, this is a massive $4 trillion system that makes more money when we're sick. And that's a huge problem. And I left the system to go figure out ways to um, really keep people healthy um, through through different means. Um, and I think what every patient unfortunately needs to understand is that no matter no matter how wonderful your doctor is, the way we're trained, the way the research is done, on every level, this invisible hand of gigantic financial incentives is corrupting the way we think about the body. It's corrupting the way we think about disease. It's making us not look at root causes and connections between diseases and put on these very siloed goggles about the body and about disease that is not serving patients truly getting healthier. So that. So what is important is that you have a good functional medicine doctor. It could be a naturopath. It could be a medical doctor who's functional medicine or holistic herbalist practitioner Uh, Those who actually know about health and what the human body needs, if you just see a typical medical doctor, you're not going to get what you need for health. Dietitians are the same. They're very medically trained, and they're not going to be able to give you the information that you need to really understand about how to be healthy and how to stay out of the system. Because it's not like we can just call up the FDA or the government and ask them to change everything because they're not going to. This system is not going to change. There's too much money and power in it and too many payoffs in this system, but you have to be smart about it and you have to have your own critical thinking skills, your own common sense, paying attention to your own body and learning how to nourish it properly because our body does not run on fumes. Our body does not run on chemicals and medications. Our body actually needs real nutrients and nutrition to work properly. And that is what is key. If you're not willing to learn that, then you are just going to be in the system like everyone else. So the goal is to stay out of the system and know how to do that. You can research. YouTube is excellent. Dr. Axe always has good podcasts. Dr. Hyman, Dr. Berg, Dr. Paul Saladino, and there's so many more. And like I said, you're with your own self 24 hours a day. Listen to your body. It talks to you. Pay attention and and just treat it with the utmost respect. Because like I said, my goal is to have quality life, not just to live a long time, but to have quality life while I am alive and to take care of my amazing human body. It works hard every day to take care of me. So I also want to work hard to take care of it. All right, everyone have a great day and go out there and do what you need to do. Bye. Many people have heard this, but the United States and New Zealand are the only two countries that can market medicine the way that we do today via all of these commercials and also the financial in, in interests and government officials. There's lots and lots of issues here. In fact, you know, when I look at all of those different sort of big uh, you know, industries today, I really think the pharmaceutical industry today is the most corrupt of all of them. And it's 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 the re- and even more so than government, even more so than the food and agricultural industry. I think it's the most corrupt, and I think it should be. And the, and the reason why is it's so far from what it really should be. I mean, really, mm-hmm. medicine should all be about just helping sick people heal, get to the root cause of their issue, and getting well. And it doesn't do that at all. In fact, the crazy part is you take one medication, typically causes another disease. So then you have to take another. So it really actually perpetuates the cycle, making people worse. And everybody breaks the Hippocratic Oath, uh, most MDs especially, first do no harm, because anytime you prescribe a medication, another, another one, you're actually doing more harm than if you would have typically recommended a diet or supplement or lifestyle change. And so it's obviously a massive, massive issue. And, and what, what, what,